Hey guys, this is Marissa at Hateman. We've got a review for you today. We're going to be talking about Red Lion's Pack Series Panel Meter. Hi, my name is Jake, and uh, today we're going to talk about the Red Lion Pack Series Panel Meter. They're pretty neat little meters. Uh, we use them all the time here at Hateman Electronics. So uh, I'll just get this unboxed and we'll get right into it. While I'm opening this up, I'll tell you that the uh, PAX meters are a, um, you can see they're a small, I'll show the other camera here, they're small, um, 1 8 din, which basically means the cutout hole for, they're a panel meter, so they go into a panel. The uh, cutout hole is 3.62 inches by 1.77 inches. Um, the cool thing about these is that they have a very, um, they have a very narrow uh, overhang when you when you slide them into the hole. So you can fit, if you've got a lot of meters you need to fit into a smaller panel, these are a little bit easier to squeeze together than maybe some of your other meters that have a very large overhang around the cutout hole. So basically I got it out of the box here and I'll show you about it. Now the PAX meters come in a variety of different types. Uh, you can get voltage meters, voltage and current meters, both AC and DC. Voltage and current usually come in the same meter. So like this is the type that we use all the time. This is the PAX D meter. It is a DC voltage and current measurement device. So you can measure DC volts and current. DC volts up to 300 volts and that is what we normally use them for we use them in a product that we make called a, a battery tester which we use to uh, test the health of big batteries that go on locomotives so basically it's just a general purpose panel meter uh, it'll give you volts it'll give you current um, i think you can actually measure resistance with these but it's really robust uh, it's a five digit display, so it has a little bit of accuracy with it too. I believe that the accuracy for the PAX Ds is, uh, it can be as tight as 0.03% of your measurement and um, as loose as 0.15% of your measurement. So even on the, uh, we'll say the, the least accurate um, scaling and uh, whether you're doing volts or current or whatever, the least accurate measurement you're going to make is still going to be 0.15% of your measurement, which is pretty good for a, for an inexpensive panel meter like this. Like I mentioned before, there's a bunch of different types you can, you can get the DC and AC voltage and current. You can also do temperature. So if you need to measure like RTDs or whatever, you can do that with these. Um, you can also measure strain gauges. Uh, they have ones that are specifically for measuring, uh, doing process measurements. So like zero to 10 volt signals and stuff like that, or like small voltage signals or whatever. The nice thing about these guys is that they all have internal scaling. So um, let's say you're measuring something like, even with this meter, uh, if you're only measuring, you're measuring like a zero to 10 volt signal, and let's say that translates to something, you can um, set up the scaling in the meter itself so that it actually displays the translated value instead of the actual like raw value of volts that it's getting in. So, you know, let's say you have a zero volt signal is, uh, is it's, it's coming, let's say it's coming off of a, a, a PT or a voltage transducer. Zero volts is zero volts, but let's say you're using the voltage transducer to measure a thousand volts. Well, once it comes out of the transducer, it's only 10 volts. So you can scale that in here so that whenever it sees 10 volts on the back of this meter, it'll actually display a thousand volts, which is pretty cool. Because a lot of times, you know, we'll have to do that in an automated fashion with uh, some form of other software or device to be able to display in that type. Another thing about these is that they have a sunlight readable display, which means that uh, most people, if you've ever tried to use your cell phone outside or um, cell phones aren't as bad anymore, but like some of the older style LED or LCD screens, when you would get out in the sunlight, they would kind of wash out and it would be really hard to read. Whereas these guys, it's probably a combination of the fact that they use a like a red colored seven segment display with like a, like a red, a reddish plastic case that it shines through makes it so that it kind of blocks out the sunlight and it's, and it's relatively readable even in direct sunlight you know i'm not going to say that it's as good as reading it in a dark room or something like that or even reading it indoors but i don't think that you're ever really going to come into a situation where you're outside 
trying to read one of these things and you you know have to throw a blanket over it just so you can read it. I, I think that they're relatively readable in the sunlight, which is good. Uh, one of the other things that's cool about these is that on the back, there are a few slots here where you can put in um, optional cards for these things. I think you could put up to three of them in here. Um, and one of the things that we have used the option cards for is one of the options you have is to be able to do uh, analog output. If you have one of these panel meters and it's reading, for the case that we used it for in our battery conditioner system, um, it was reading locomotive battery volts. The panel meter would be hooked right up to the battery reading the voltage off the battery, but we also had a PLC that was controlling the whole system that needed to know what that voltage was. So we installed one of the analog output cards in here and tied that into our PLC so our PLC could read what the panel meter was reading and be able to uh, control and adjust things accordingly. The other types of option cards you can get for these are things like communications cards, which is really nice. So if you want to talk to it via Modbus or Profibus or DeviceNet or whatever, um, that uh, that is totally possible with these, which is really nice. The biggest thing we use these for, like I said, is is we use the, the PAX D meters more than anything. Um, we have used some of the other ones, like for doing the, the temperature and stuff like that. But for the most part, we use the PAX D meters and we're, we're pretty happy for them. They come in a NEMA 4X enclosure, which is really important for um, if you're in a field like us where you're dealing a lot with industrial work, or even if it's outside a little bit, it's well protected from the environment. Now, what that means for this is that the flange is NEMA 4X rated. So if you stick this in a panel, as long as everything behind that panel is NEMA 4X rated, the seal here, so you have your panel like this and it's sticking through, this seal is NEMA 4X rated, or I believe it's IP65. If you have it in a cabinet outside and the rain's like coming in on it, it should be okay um, as long as you don't have any water getting in behind the panel that could reach in. There's all sorts of vent holes and everything for ventilation and, and cooling. So if this was, if the back of this was exposed to the elements, it would be able to be damaged. But as far as, you know, being through an enclosure that's outside, as long as the enclosure itself is also NEMA 4X, it should be good to go. Uh, and we use these, our battery testers and conditioners are out on rail yards all day, every day for years. And very rarely do we have to have to replace these, which is a, a testament to these things because they're relatively inexpensive. Like I said, I mean, you know, between a hundred, 200, $300, I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, but it's relatively inexpensive for something that's, uh, this nice of a package and we don't really have to replace them that often they calibrate really well we have our own little calibration lab here that we do our all of our own calibration we never really have to do a whole lot of adjustment on these uh the one thing that i will mention down inside of the case there's a circuit board in here and there's a bunch of jumpers on there when you read the manual it will tell you that depending on what voltage range you're trying to measure or what current range you're trying to measure with the device, you have to change a jumper on the circuit board inside of here. Now, if I was going to make one complaint about these, one thing that I really don't like about them is that in order to change what range you're you're measuring at you literally have to open the case of this up and change a jumper on the circuit board whereas a lot of meters like your standard handheld dmms and stuff they will usually auto range so if uh if a voltage goes above a certain level it'll automatically change the range internally and then you really don't have to worry about it as long as you don't go over the maximum range of the meter, in which case, obviously, you run the risk of burning it up. That's pretty much, I guess, it for these these panel meters. They're, they're really cool little devices. Uh, we like them, we use them a lot. Like I said, we've used them in a, a couple of products that are really big for us. Between the fact that they're inexpensive, they're easy to get, the fact that they're IP65 um, or NEMA 4X rated, um, is really important important to us. The fact that you can add all the option cards if you need to do analog outputs or you know some of the other option cards are digital IO, 
uh, and obviously the communications stuff. There are also one of the things that I didn't go into um, into detail on that we could probably do another video on if, if there is interest is uh, these have a whole bunch of internal functions that you can actually you can actually enable with built-in user input. So let's say you put a dry you put a dry contact across two of the terminals on here and it'll allow you to do things like reset the min max measurement. So anyone familiar with using your regular handheld fluke multimeter or whatever, you know, you can set it to min max. And once you set min max up, it's just going to sit there and and every time you get a measurement that goes over the max, it's going to keep adjusting that max indefinitely until you reset it. Well, you can do that automatically with a button or a relay or a dry contact. What we use that for is when we do our battery tests, we basically put a load across the battery for a short period of time. Right before we release that load, we throw a dry contact across that enables the hold feature, which will hold the value on the screen until we tell it to go away. And what that enables the user to do is to be able to see what that value is because as soon as we release the load, the voltage changes instantly and they need to know what it is right before the voltage changes. So we use a dry contact to be able to hold that in. So I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, but we, we do really enjoy these, uh, these, these meters other than, like I said, you know, a couple little things like the, the fact that you have to get inside of here to change your ranges and stuff. We do really enjoy them and feel free to contact us at hateman.com. If you have any questions about it, or if you have your own application, you want to use them in and you have a, have a need of any assistance, feel free to let us know in the meantime. Uh, we'll see you later. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this review, let us know in the comments below and subscribe to our channel for more. If you have any questions or want to get started on a project, email us at info at We'll see you in the next video.